are Sheffield United getting promoted? So today I thought I'd focus on Sheffield United. I've been a bit hard on them in champ chat and score prediction videos. I, I said that I thought Chris Wilder was the one holding them back. I can admit when I'm wrong. But the underlying numbers makes it look like Sheffield United have everything in place to go back up first time of asking. So if we look at the table right at the beginning of the season, yes, it's only nine games that have happened. But the reality is they haven't lost yet this season. Six games, three draws, zero losses. If you want to get promoted, the backbone of that success is making sure that you're tough to beat. And as well as being tough to beat, you got to be tough to score against. And they have that as well. But also I'd like to take a moment to talk about George Bulldog. He sadly passed away at the age of 31, which is no age. It really is no age. And the thoughts of the OK Football Show go out to his friends, family, former colleagues, the fans, for anyone that watched him put on the colours of their club. He's a local lad as well. He actually did his apprenticeships at MK and came through the academy there. So it's devastating news, horrible news to see. Now, I did say Chris Wilder was the only thing holding them back, but the reality is they were terrible last season in the Premier League. Luton Town finished 10 points above them. Sheffield United finished rock bottom. But to see how far Sheffield United have come, you've got to just look at that last game. I'll talk about all the other games, but Luton and Sheffield United are poles apart. Looking at the games that Sheffield United have played so far this season, yes, there haven't been absolute gargantuan clubs that will be up there come the end of the season, but they've done what they need to do. And look, there are no easy games in the championship. Beating Preston 2-0. Preston, you know, they haven't set the world alight at the moment, but, you know, they can score goals. QPR 2-2, yes. QPR haven't had the best start of the season. And Norwich 1-1. Also, Norwich had a slow start to the season. Season. But since then, Norwich have taken off. And this was actually the last goal that Sheffield United had conceded. And since then, they've looked tough to break down. They've looked tidy in midfield. And yes, sure, Sheffield United have struggled in front of goal. But as I was saying before, you build the basics of being tough to beat, tough to break down, and then the rest can come. Providing you can squeeze out the results, then it's all happy days, isn't it? But since that 1-1 draw with Norwich, 1-0 against Watford, 2-0 away at Hull, 1-0 at home to a rejuvenated Derby, 0-0 at Fratton Park against Portsmouth, but Portsmouth for no mugs, 1-0 at home to Swansea, and then obviously the 2-0 home win to Luton Town. And a big part of these, the, these are low scoring games, but at the same time, the other team hasn't scored and Sheffield United have applied a lot of pressure during these games albeit without scoring too many goals and they brought in some talent up top so you've got Kiefer Moore who is very good at this level but I would say he's not good enough for the Premier League hence why he's always dropping down to the championship got Jezron Raksaki who they brought in on loan from Crystal Palace yes he had a couple of games for Crystal Palace last year but he is a top top talent and he will go far in the game and they brought in Tyrese Campbell who is indeed a player at this level as well he's done great stuff at Stoke but this is not the only business they've done they've used the low market well bring in Harry Suter who is an absolute colossus at this level he forms a very good partnership with Anel and Ahmed Hodzic Anel and Ahmed Hodzic Anel and Ahmed he makes a very good partnership with Anel Ahmed Hodzic. Nailed it! Yes. It's a very tough name to say, actually. But also snapping up talent across the back line. Alfie Gilchrist from Chelsea, who's really highly thought of. Michael Cooper, who I would say was one of the best goalkeepers in the championship. I I'm amazed that Plymouth didn't get more money for him. And also not forgetting Sam McCallan, who they brought in on a free from Norwich. It's just tremendous business all round. And meanwhile, they've managed to get rid of, I would say, Deadwood. They've sold some players from the academy as well. Like William Masula sold him for big money. 
And it sort of gives them breathing space, breathing room to bring in the players that they want. Like Benny Traore as well. He's a player that never really set the world alight at Sheffield United. But they also got rid of quite a few other players. Like Ollie McBurney, Ben Osborne, Max Lowe. Players that were just sort of hanging around on the wage book and just not offering them new contracts. But getting these players off the wage bill gave them the freedom to bring in quite a few new players and they used the Premier League loan market so well. Like, I'm under no illusions though. There are definitely bigger tests for Sheffield United coming up. They have Leeds, they have Middlesbrough up next and bigger tests coming in November with games against Sunderland and West Brom. Like, in a way, they're lucky that these games haven't all come bam, 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 one after another, but you need a bit of luck as well as dealing with what you can deal with. Being solid at the back, being tight in the middle, and as I said, being prolific up top will come. But they do have the talent for that. But I had Sheffield United, I think in my pre-season predictions, I reckon I had them in the playoffs. I think I might have had them third or fourth, but I would sort of revise that now and I would say I can see them gunning for one of the top two positions. Essentially, they have everything that they need and Chris Wilder has done well to clear out Deadwood, bring in new, young, hungry players and the only way is up for Sheffield United. It's a shame about their takeover. It's quite funny. The takeover just is taking a very long time. But I guess it will happen when it happens. And right now, they've got breathing space financially because of all the players that they've sold, and they've done well to sell those players. But I guess I want to hear your thoughts about Sheffield United. Do you think they will take one of the top two positions in the championship? Or will they just miss out and get into the playoffs? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like championship content, remember, like this video and subscribe for even more championship content. Whoever you follow, I hope you all have a great day.